We're going to do splits, side splits, that is. Bring the legs wide apart as you can. And then come forward as far as you can. upper body out over the left leg you can either go straight out over it or you can bring the left shoulder down toward the left knee and twist open with the right shoulder like Michelle was but if you're doing that make sure you push the right leg down Extend the heel of the left leg. I just came to see you never do that to me. Would you, baby? All right. Come up and do the other side. Same thing that you did on that side. Twisting variation, keep trying to roll the right shoulder under as much as you can. straight back and then come down over the front leg try to bring the knee out to the side pull the foot up if the foot slides down you can always hold it there with the forearm or elbow that works you don't have to you could by the ocean. It's a pigeon by the ocean.
different variations on this pose if you want to do some of them, like the twisting variation there, or come up like this. Or anything else other than coming out of it. That's fine. Usually one side is tighter than the other. If you don't experience that, lucky you. But generally, because of the schizophrenic nature of your mind, and it translates into your body, no. Who knows why, it's just one of those things. One side is tighter than the other. Hatha yoga. Hatha means sun and moon. So it's a balancing of the polarities, the opposites. Not only a on the body, but actually in the brain as well. The brain hemispheres are polarized for most people. One side is more dominant than the other, so it's lateralized. So if you're left brain dominant, then you're more linear in your thinking and uptight and uh, a drag to be around. If you're a right brain, then you're really flowing with what's happening, but you're so spaced out that you crash your car into a truck. So you want to have a balance of the hemispheres, so you're relaxed, but you can still think on some kind of logical level. And the more the brain hemispheres, and it's reflected in the sides of the body also, become balanced, the more transcendent your experience is, the more elevated and elated you become. Just like in, in anything, when you bring opposites together, in that moment there's a, uh, a spark. And in that spark, there's a bliss. So that's why yogis say the best time to meditate is sunrise and sunset, because it's in between day and night. And there's all sorts of tantric practices that use polarities to balance your brain, which we won't go into. So come on up, slowly. That's nice. Bring the soles of the feet together. Pull them in. This one's always good because everybody's hips are always tight, except for mine and yours. <laughs> Come forward, far as you can. <laughs> The purpose of yoga, according to the ancient yogis, is to balance your body and your mind and to come into a state of bliss and peace and intense aliveness. For more recent yogis, it's more just toning up your thighs and looking cool. But it also feels good, so no matter what you approach it for, it's worthwhile doing. Unlike most exercise, which is just working your heart and lungs and a few muscles, yoga works every system in the body, endocrine system, digestion, skeletal, all that stuff, all that cool stuff. down on your back. <laughs> Take a long, full, deep breath through the nose, up to the top of the lungs. 
and let it go. One more time, deep breath. relaxation when we return you can start now you can just lie on your back and let go inhale 